With my voice I cry out to the Lord. With my voice I plead for mercy to the Lord. I pour out my complaint before him. I tell my trouble before him. When my spirit faints within me, you know my way. In the path where I walk, they have hidden a trap for me. Look to the right and see. There is none who takes notice of me. No refuge remains to me. No one cares for my soul. I cry to you, O Lord. I say you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Attend to my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are too strong for me. Bring me out of prison, that I may give thanks to your name. The righteous shall surround me, for you will deal bountifully with me. Do you wish to cry out to the Lord, to plead for mercy from the experiences you have suffered this past year? Truly, we have much to complain about, not least of which is the pandemic in the world. This year, we have faced threats against our health, our social circles, our finances, and our very lives. There are also many things you, have, you may have experienced besides the pandemic. Crime, discrimination, and death are rampant in our world. Maybe you mourn over a loved one who has passed or some other type of loss. Maybe there are many people you love and want to visit but whom you are unable to see. It is my hope that you can grieve your pain and your losses with your Lord here tonight. What this service can hopefully allow you to do is lament openly to the Lord, your God, who listens to you. Allow him to hear the griefs and the sorrows of your heart brought out in prayer, for he will listen. There have been many people in the Bible who have experienced terrible things, and this evening we join them in lamenting over the brokenness of this world and the brokenness of our own hearts. These words of the saints, which will be our words as we pray them tonight, will not be delicate nor pretty, for they will confess the bitterness of our lament. You may freely speak any bitterness that resides within you, within your flesh, and you may confess the sadness of your soul. Bring out your anxieties and fears and cast them upon the Lord, for he will bear the burden and lighten your load. Your laments, your tragedies, are expressed with sorrow. But the words of the Lord are a comfort to a shaken spirit, and a balm to a broken heart. May the sweetness of his words take away the bitterness you have tasted over this past year, and show you his love for you, who are in pain. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. Lord God Almighty, be with us this night, we pray. You know our hearts and our troubles. Be not far from us, but always be present with us. Comfort us in our afflictions and place hope within us. Lord, we ask you to hear our laments and our complaints. Guide us in our words and direct our hearts that we can, that we can pour out the sorrows we carry within ourselves so that you may fill us with the hope of Christ. Amen. Our first reading for this evening comes from the book of Job, 
chapters 1 and 3. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. The Lord said to Satan, From where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth and walking up and down on it. And the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, who fears God and turns away from evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for no reason? Have you not put a hedge around him and his house and all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. But stretch out your hand and touch all that he has, and he will curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your hand. Only against him do not stretch out your hand. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. Now there was a day when Job's sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And there came a messenger to Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the donkeys feeding beside them. And the Sabaeans fell upon them and took them and struck down the servants with the edge of the sword. And I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, the fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, The Chaldeans formed three groups and made a raid on the camels and took them and struck down the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. And while he was yet speaking, there came another and said, Your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in the oldest brother's house. And behold, a great wind came across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young people, and they are dead. And I alone have escaped to tell you. Then Job arose, tore his robe, shaved his head, and fell on the ground and worshipped. And he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job did not sin by charging God with wrong. After this, Job opened his mouth and cursed the day of his birth. And Job said, Why is light given to him who is in misery? and life to the bitter in soul, who long for death, but it does not come, and dig for it more than for hidden treasures, who rejoice exceedingly and are glad when they find the grave. Why is light given to a man whose way is, is hidden, whom God has hedged in? For my sign comes instead of my bread, and my groanings are poured out like water. For the thing that I fear comes upon me, and what I dread befalls me. I am not at ease, nor am I quiet. I have no rest, but trouble comes. This is the word of the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Lord,
Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting you are gone. You return man to dust and say, Return, O children of man, for a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday when it is past, or as a watch in the night. You sweep them away as with a flood. They are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed, in the evening it fades and withers. So teach us to number our days, that we may get a heart of wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, and for as many years as we have seen evil. Let your work be shown to, their, to your servants, and your glorious power to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Our second reading comes from Matthew chapter 16. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his life? Or what shall a man give in return for his life? For the Son of Man is, coming, is going to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay each person according to what he has done. Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the word of the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Job lost his wealth, his servants, his children, and his health. These losses placed a great weight on the soul of Job that outweighed the sand of the sea. But if you have lost something, maybe something less than Job. Do not say your own losses are nothing. You have loved and you have lost. If you have possessed something precious and find it now gone, then you feel grief and loss. Your feelings are real and true. They should not be dismissed or denied. Allow yourself to cry out as Job did. Allow yourself to admit pain and sorrow. Our Lord did not stop the voice of Job from speaking out of the bitterness of his soul. And our Lord permits you to do the same. Even if you feel you have something terrible to say, then please speak it out. For your Lord listens to you. Can you say alongside Job that you feel as though death is better than the life of grief you now live? If you can, you have my sympathies. And if your 
thoughts drift toward suicide, I pray you will be comforted by our Lord, feeling as though you would prefer death to life shows that there is something deeply wrong in your life and you need someone to drag you up from the depths of pain. And the person who can do this is your Lord Jesus Christ. When Satan afflicted Job, the devil took everything that Job had in the world. When Satan afflicted Jesus through the words of Peter, Jesus rebuked him and declared that he would never let the devil stand in his way of the cross. Job felt as though he would die because of the grief he felt, but Christ wants to bring new life to those who are dying. The death of Christ on the cross was his victory over death itself, for Christ came out of death into life. He would not be stopped on his journey to the cross, for the cross is how he gives you life. Now, we carry our own crosses in this world because of Christ. The cross is an instrument of death. And we carry it now with us wherever we go. For the death we carry is our death to the world. The death to sin, to pain, and to loss itself. Our Lord Jesus Christ suffered the loss of all things this world had to offer, so that you, who have experienced loss and grief, could receive his life. As Christ died to the griefs and losses of this world, so he brings you into that death to grief, pain, and loss, so that you may have newness of life within you. But do not dismiss or deny your feelings of grief and loss, for that would also be denying the grief and loss Christ suffered. You do not have a Lord who does not understand what you are going through. You have Christ, who has experienced grief and loss on the way to his cross, much as you have experienced grief carrying your cross around. In him, you have a person who knows your pain and journeys with you as you bear his cross, so you might also have the life that comes from his death. Let us pray for ourselves and for all people going through loss and despair. Be with those who are emotionally shaken, O Christ. There is much in this world that causes us grief, and many who feel there is no one who can understand them. Be present with them, O Lord, so they have you, who has undergone great pain and loss, that you may lift them up, up above their sorrows, so that, like you, were lifted up from the grave. Comfort those who are infirm in body, mind, and soul, O Lord, and give healing to all people. There are many who suffer afflictions of the flesh, stresses and illnesses of the mind, and bitterness in the soul. Cause healing to come for them, that they may once again stand firm and see the glory of your kingdom, which is to come, where no sickness or infirmity will ever again touch us. Be with those who mourn, who have lost those whom they love from this world. Dry the tears from their eyes, O God of our salvation, that they may have the hope and peace that only comes from your joyful resurrection. In you is life, O Lord. Never lead us, but guide us in life everlasting, and comfort the hearts of mourners 
until they can see their loved ones again, face to face. Grant stability to those contemplating suicide, O oh God. They are in great distress and terrible despair. Fill their lives with your love. Help them to know they are not alone or unloved or beyond help. Give them comfort in their sadness and pain and place people in their lives to care for them with genuine kindness. There are many people who experience loss, O oh God. Work within the world you have created and give to all people their daily bread. We pray, O oh Lord, that none go hungry, thirsty, or naked, but that all people are taken care of so that they need not worry about anything. Oh, uh, we continue with our hymn, When Aimless Violence Takes Those We Love. This evening comes from Job chapter 19. 
Behold, I cry out violence, but I am not answered. I call for help, but there is no justice. He has walled up my way so that I cannot pass, and he has set darkness upon my paths. He has stripped from me my glory and taken the crown from my head. He breaks me down on every side, and I am gone. And my hope has he pulled up like a tree. He has kindled his wrath against me and counts me as his adversary. His troops come on together. They have cast up their siege ramp against me and encamp around my tent. He has put my brothers far from me. And those who knew me are wholly estranged from me. My relatives have failed me. My close friends have forgotten me. The guests in my house and my maidservants count me as a stranger. I have become a foreigner in their eyes. I call to my servant, but he gives me no answer. I must plead with him, with my mouth for mercy. My spirit is estranged from my wife, and I am a stench to the children of my own mother. Even when even young children despise me, when I rise, they talk against me. All my intimate friends support me, and those whom I loved have turned against me. My bones stick to my skin and to my flesh and I have escaped by the skin of my teeth. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me, O you, my friends, for the hand of God has touched me. Why do you, like God, pursue me? Why are you not satisfied with my flesh? This is the word of the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Psalm 88. O Lord, God of my salvation, I cry out day and night before you. Let my prayer come before you. Incline your ear to my promise. For my soul is full of troubles, and my life draws near to Sheol. I am counted among those who go down to the pit. I am a man who has no strength, like one set loose among the, among the dead, like the slain that lie in the grave, like those whom you remember no more, for they are cut off from your hand. You have put me in the depths of the pit, in the regions dark and deep. Your wrath lies heavy upon me, and you overwhelm me with all your ways. You have caused my companions to shun me. You have made me a horror to them. I am shut in so that I cannot escape. My eye grows dim through sorrow. Every day I call upon you, O Lord. I spread out my hands to you. You work wonders for the dead. Do the departed rise up to praise you? Is your steadfast love declared in the grave, or your faithfulness in destruction? Are your wonders known in the darkness, or your righteousness in the land of forgetfulness? But I, O Lord, cry to you. In the morning my prayer comes before you. O Lord, why do you cast my soul away? Why do you hide your face from me? Afflicted and close to death from my youth up, I suffer your tears, I am helpless. Your wrath has swept over me. Your dreadful assaults destroy me. They surround me like a flood all day long. They close in on me together. You have caused my beloved and my friend to shun me. My companions have become darkness. Our fourth reading 
comes from Mark chapters 14 and 15. And they went to a place called Gethsemane. And Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter and James and John and began to be greatly distressed and troubled. And he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch. And going a little farther, he fell on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. And he came and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy. And they did not know what to answer him. And he came the third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. And immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Seize him and lead him away under guard. And when he came, he went up to him and at once and said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. And they laid hands on him and seized him. But one of those who stood by drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. And Jesus said to him, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now at the feast, Pilate used to release for them one prisoner for whom they asked. And among the rebels in prison who had committed murder in the insurrection, there was a man called Barabbas. And the crowd came up and began to ask Pilate to do as he usually did for them. And he answered them, saying, do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he perceived that it was out of envy that the chief priests had delivered him up. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release for them Barabbas instead. And the pilot again and said to them, Then what shall I do with the man you call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him! And Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. This is the word of the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Everyone gets lonely, but this past year has been especially difficult for we who need people to love and cherish, and to simply spend a little time with, for that matter. Restrictions during the global pandemic are forcing us to separate ourselves from others. It has not gotten easier over time, but worse as our continuing need for life with others gets denied. This Christmas, will be a lonely time of year where we will not be able to see who we want, nor can we exchange gifts like we normally do, nor partake of any large family meals, per tradition. But there are more reasons than maintaining public health that cause us to feel isolated. Family strife can cause these things, weak friendships or even past trauma. We find Job sitting and lamenting that everyone seems to have abandoned him. His relatives have failed him. His close friends have forgotten him. 
Job's own wife does not want him to be around her anymore. And for that matter, neither do Job's brothers. Even Job's friends, who are around him right now, appear like they have turned against him and are out for a pound of flesh. But, worst of all, Job feels like God has not simply abandoned him, but has led the attack against his flesh. Feeling isolated from the God who made you cuts you down to the soul. But, as we prayed in Psalm 88, we can still come to him in prayer. Even though you might feel as though darkness is your closest friend, now that everyone else is gone, and God himself is far from you, you can still come to God in prayer about your loneliness and sorrow and tell him you feel he has abandoned you. Tell him this in prayer. Tell him exactly this with the words of Psalm 88, which he has given to you in his own scriptures. The Lord gives you these words because he wants you to come to him not only when you are happy, but especially when you feel your worst. You can pray to the God of your salvation, and he will listen. Jesus said a prayer of loneliness and abandonment in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus knew his death on the cross was inevitable. He knew he would be abandoned by everyone. But Jesus still prayed to the God of our salvation. There is no useless prayer, because every prayer is said to a God who loves you. Jesus knows about loneliness and abandonment. His disciples, his best friends for the past three years, they abandoned him. Judas, who is one of the disciples, walked straight up to Jesus and betrayed him with a kiss. Jesus' own people, his kinsmen, demanded he be executed without just cause, and the government, supposedly to protect the rights of the citizens, the government over Jesus carried out the order with little hesitation. Everyone on earth appeared to abandon Jesus, and he was alone. But Jesus does not leave us alone. Christ is the God of our salvation. He saves you. He does not abandon you nor let your prayers fall on deaf ears. People might abandon Christ, but he abandons no one. So pray out of your heart, whatever words or groanings that are within you. Your God will hear whatever you have to say, and he will save you in this world or the next, for he will not abandon you, nor will he forsake you. He will be with you, even if you feel like he isn't. Let us pray for we who are lonely and isolated, and for all people who feel the same as us. Be present with those who are alone, O Christ. Do not leave us. Be with us always and listen to our prayers. Guide the words of our mouths and the inner groanings of our hearts that we may pray to you in faith and truth. We ask you to give us what we need, O Lord, and always be present with us. Give strength to those who will not be able to see family and friends this year, O Lord. Many are unable to travel or unable to enter another household for fear of spreading the virus. 
Comfort us who feel lonely and be with us during holidays. Help us not feel alone, but present with you. Direct our mouths and encourage our hearts, O Christ, to talk to others this holiday season. Allow us to receive the company of others and to give company to our neighbors. We cannot come close to one another, but allow us to join together at a distance. O God of our salvation, allow us to be able to join together again one day with handshakes and hugs, with kisses and holding of hands. We miss the touch of other people and the clo closeness we once felt with others. Give us patience and lighten our hearts to love one another at this time. Amen. We continue with the hymn, Lord, Thee I Love With All My Heart.
fifth reading for this evening comes from Job chapter 14. Then Job answered and said, For there is hope for a tree. If it be cut down, it will sprout again, and that its shoots will not cease. Though its root grow old in the earth, and its stump die in the soil, yet at the scent of water it will bud, and put out branches like a young plant. But a man dies, and is laid low. Man breathes his last, and where is he? As waters fail from a lake, and a river wastes away and dries up, so a man lies down and rises not again. Till the heavens are no more, he will not awake, or be roused out of his sleep. Oh, that you would hide me in Sheol, that you would conceal me until your wrath be past, that you would appoint a set time and remember me. If a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my service I would wait till my renewal should come. You would call, and I would answer you. You would long for the work of your hands, for then you would number my steps. You would not keep watch over my sin. My transgression would be sealed up in a bag, and you would cover over my iniquity. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We pray Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. For he knows our frame, he remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass, he flourishes like a flower of the field. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, and his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, O you his angels. You mighty ones who do his word, obeying the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers who do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my son. Our sixth and final reading of the evening is from John chapter 20. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going toward the tomb. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. 
Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. This is the word of the Lord. Lord, have mercy. If a man dies, shall he live again? If a body is scarred, if a mind is distraught, if a soul is bitter, can it be healed and made perfect again? The promise we have in Jesus Christ our Lord is that the dead can live again, and those suffering all manner of afflictions will be healed once more. The threats of this world and the pain they bring are real. Make no mistake about it. The evils that befall you are all too real, and they can leave deep scars. Figments of the imagination did not crucify our Lord and place him in the grave. Jesus suffered the worst the world had to offer. Yet our Lord was not overcome by the world, nor its evils. After resting in the grave, our Lord rose up and walked out of death into life. The horrors of the world are truly horrible, but they have no power over Christ. He rose to newness of life, and he came out of the tomb to those he loved. Jesus did not retreat from the world, nor abandon all of us who dwell within it. He rose to newness of life to come to us. He came to calm tortured hearts and wipe away streaming tears. When Christ came out of his tomb, he went to Mary Magdalene and spoke to her sweetly. His words sweetened the bitterness of her mourning, and she could take heart in her teacher's victory over evil and death. Christ came to Mary and called her by name, and the same is true for all of us. Like Job, we await in all the days of our service that our Lord will call us and that we will answer him. The love Christ fashions and shapes within us by the hands of the Holy Spirit will end in a call from our graves and our stepping out into newness of life. So if a man dies, shall he live again? Yes. He shall, when the Lord calls him by name, from the deadness of the grave and place life within him, through his calm. There is hope of salvation from the evils of this world which seek our lives, our sanity, and our tears. In Christ we have the hope that we are not left behind in tears, but that he will come to us and wipe the tears from our eyes. This is a promise made by our Lord in his resurrection. The very act wherein our Lord worked life from death is a promise given to us that we will not be left in the evils of this world, but brought into the joy of his salvation. Pour out from your heart to the Lord of your salvation. Tell him of all the evils that are in your life, from the greatest to the least. Pray to him of sadness you have felt and the tears that you have shed. Cry to him of how much you have suffered. He will not turn from you, but turn toward you and listen to every problem that weighs you down. For he cares for you. He will take upon himself the weight of your life. He will bear you up and lift you into his glory. Christ once bore the burden of the world's evils upon himself, but he could bear the weight he bore the weight, and he rose up over the weight of the world, rose up over death itself. And he does the same for you. 
Jesus lifts you, his loved one, above the evils of this world and gives to you life, that you may not look at the world and all its faulty promises, all its vain endeavors, but have the promises and hope of Christ for you. Let us pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who gives us the hope and promise of salvation. Be with us, O God of salvation. Be with us who dread the evils of this world like sickness, loneliness, and death. Deliver us from evil and bring us into newness of life. In Christ Jesus. Raise our hearts as you raised our body, Jesus Christ, and come to us as you came to Mary Magdalene. Call to us by name and raise us out of sorrow and joy. There are many evils in this world, O Lord, and we mourn over them. Give to us the hope that all these things will come to an end, and that there will be a day when no evil will afflict us again. Direct our thoughts and hearts, O Lord of hope. Point us the way from the evils of this world to look toward your resurrection from the grave. Place our hopes in you, that we might find comfort and care in your promises of victory over the evils of this world, so our hearts can be put at ease. God of hope, be with all of us and allow us to carry your word of hope and promise among our lips, so that we might go out into the world and share this hope with all people everywhere, that none may be abandoned or lonely in this world, none may be abandoned to grief or loss, but that all may come to you and have the hope in your resurrection, in your victory over sin, death, and power of the devil. Amen. Continue with our hymn when peace like a river.
The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. They prepare us a table before me, the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord bless you, defend you from all evil, and bring you everlasting life. Amen.